attention of a girl with a reputation. But some men are not amused. On today's show, brothers and brothers-in-law confront their sisters for being tramps. Meet Wayne and his wife, Cheryl. Wayne won't let Cheryl's sister, Victoria, in the house because he says she sleeps around so much and then tells his kids. But you said she came on to some of the people at your wedding. Oh, yeah, yes. that was my brother, Michael, ran him down. Vicky chases anything child that has a pair of pants with a zipper. Say that. Victoria, what about when you have one guy upstairs in the bed and one downstairs on the couch? Oh. What about it? You think that's fine? That's, that's Trent. You're the Trent, that's why you're here. You was a Trent before you got married. Sweetheart. <laughs> Are you really worried about getting AIDS? Yes, I am. Are, have you, you think been tested? just the condom will stop it? What happens when the condom tears? I don't buy the condom okay. tear. Okay, but why do you have... Wait a minute. Meet Samuel. His sister, Rosary, was married at the age of 14. She's still married, but continues to see a lot of guys. She would send... She would, you know, Tom come over at a certain time while her husband was at work. She'd have him upstairs, and she'd be making out with him, grinding on him, you know all the regular stuff. Yes. I would sometimes go over when the guys were there and when he would knock on the door and sometimes I would be the guy knocking on the door and I would just hear guys running out of the house. Well, a guy running out of the house. That's a tramp. That's a tramp? You say yeah. that's a tramp. You haven't even met her yet. That's okay. You I, get, I get tested for AIDS every six months. And if I ever think I have anything, you could ask my brother too. If I ever think I have anything, I'll go to the clinic. But every six months, I do get tested for AIDS and I do use condoms. Does your husband approve of your dating? He don't know more. He, he don't, don't know he the don't half know. of it. He don't know. He does now. He does now. Rubber's a man-made, right? So they do break down. They don't know whether they're getting this virus or not. And they go around sleeping with all these guys. And some of these guys are married. Taking it back to their wives. It's affecting their families and stuff, too. No. Exactly. No. Exactly. It's not safe. Yes. Yes. Okay. Meet Matt. He said he has double the trouble that Samuel has because Matt says not one, but two of his sisters are tramps. Now, what is it about Sherry that makes her tramp? She, she can't hold still. She's always got to have somebody. She'll make more than one date and then leave somebody to cover at home, go out with one guy, and another guy shows up for their date, and she's not there. So what's your situation, Matthew, Matt? It's embarrassing. Are you, no, are you married, or do you no. have a girlfriend in your life? Not right now. So do you go on dates? I, do, I date. So do you think there's a difference between you going on dates and them going on dates? I don't go look for a girl to throw down and sleep with. Yes, you do. Yes, you no, do. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Wendy, I Kathy. I, I, knew them for a long time. <laughs> I knew them for a long time before we did anything. Sorry. And what about your other sister, Melody? Melody, she's horrible. She, she didn't pay her rent last month. She went out and bought clothes with the money, and she's not going to have a place to live. She, they, she was having sex in the church steeple one time, and our steeple... Up on the top of it, there's... Is that the lowest audience? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tramp. <laughs> That's a tramp. Uh, All right. On the Cheryl meter of trampness, that's a tramp. <laughs> okay, okay. That's what else do they do? Well, when, while they was up there, I guess they bumped too hard and she kicked out one of the stained glass panels. <laughs> I think the thing, the thing with my son is that I, I don't tell him anything wrong. You know, if, if I tell him something, well, Mama did this and this, you know, and... I do not teach my son how to call his auntie child prosti. And you know, his, his, his little boy calls me a prostitute. My, my little boy calls her a prostitute. He's two and a half years old. He calls me a prostitute. Oh, it is natural for brothers and sisters to show concern for one another. But sexual behavior is an individual choice. I hope that all of our siblings can at least respect each other's right to live their life the way they want to. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Rachel's 24, and she is the first female to ever become a member of the Grand Council of the Knights of the KKK. She says the KKK is a completely lawful organization that does not tolerate violence of any type. 
She says racial problems occur when the government forces people pe to be together. Well, our, our primary belief is a belief that each race has the right to be proud of their people, of their accomplishments, of their culture, and of their ethnic background, whether they're black or, or uh, Mexican or Oriental or, or white. And so the organization that I'm with, the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, we're based in Harrison, Arkansas. We believe that white people have that same right and should be allowed to have the right to be proud in their race. We built this country from ground up, all together as a minority. We all built this country. So what you're well, saying is racism, you, I think, is look, wrong. When you look at who built the country, you look at who who made its laws, who formed its constitution, who made the beliefs, who made the religious beliefs. And America, America is a European country but on a different shore. But we are all shore. from foreign descent. Everyone but the Native but, American Indians. We are right, all from all other places. Excuse me, David, you're 23 and you're a member of the Aryan Unity Coalition. You're also a skinhead, or is that the same thing? Pretty much so. If you force white culture, white culture was forced into You've got the slavery. The slavery trade was a culture forced on an alien people. Yes, but how long ago was slavery? We can't be living slavery. Slavery is over 100 well, years right. ago. Was slavery a plague? Years. Misty is a member of the Youth Corps for the Knights of the Ku Klux Klan. Misty is only 15 years old, and she thinks that we were better off in the 60s when everybody was segregated. And this is Bobby, Misty's mother. She says it was a family decision to join the Klan in January. She says nobody forced Misty to join and that the KKK is a group of white people no different than the NAACP is for black people. It's my own decision. I wanted to preserve our heritage. I wanted to stay in my race. And I wanted to preserve our heritage and our race. So, but by living your life as a white person and marrying maybe a white person, wouldn't that be preserving your her heritage as well? What Yet, do you do differently with this group than you would do otherwise? Think, well, There's so much violence in the town that I'm from. We have to go to a different town. If we want to go to the movies, if we want to go out, we have to go to a different town. My why? parents take me. Because there is so much ten racial tension and violence. Her 15-year-old son, Roy, was shot and murdered by a member of the KKK. She says her deceased son is proof that the KKK is violent. And it's all because good speakers like you. Go on preaching to those young kids. Get them to join that group. The Christians in skies here, cut it. You know you're a hate group. You're racist cowards. That's what you are. She spoke of, of government segregating uh, minorities and... Who said that? She did. Okay, um, start Rachel. Okay. Yeah, Rachel. Rachel, okay. sorry. Uh, this is proof positive that we're not segregated right here. Well, I think people in New York need to get out of New York. No, no, no. This is representative of the, our country and our audience. This is absolutely, we, we pull, this is absolutely representative of the of audience at home that watches this show. I don't think it's a representative of the, of the nationwide public. Maybe where you live, but around the well, country. I travel all over the country, oh, and I think man, people in New York need to get out because you're pretty isolated here, and this isn't right? the real world. <laughs> Okay. A lot of people might ask, why even tape a show with members of the KKK and other Aryan organizations? But the fact is that whether we put them on television or not, they're still going to exist. And until we understand and examine the issues of fear that keep hatred alive, we cannot begin to heal. Okay. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. They've been married for six months and say they are very much in love, even though Helena is bisexual. Also meet Victoria and John. They plan to get married at the end of this month, even though Victoria is bisexual. And by the way, Victoria and Helena are also lovers. <laughs> Helena, were you at all nervous to tell him that you were interested in women as well? At first I was, but later on, after dating him, I found out it was like a fantasy with him, with me being with other women.
That seems to be a big fantasy for men. I mean, just the whole aspect. I mean, when it first happened, I was kind of worried that she was going to come approach me with the question of, you know, well, hey, how about you and another guy? And I was pre-planning a speech on why it shouldn't happen for about two months. <laughs> <laughs> why? Why shouldn't it happen? It just, the idea of it to me was not an interest. For her, it seemed to be like there was an interest, but for me, it wasn't. I'm talking about moral-wise. I cannot see jumping out of bed with her to jump into bed with him. And him jumping into bed with her while you watching on, that's not it. No, it doesn't, that's it, not it, it doesn't happen that way. How does it happen it's then? Not a boy, it's it not voyeuristic happen. like that. Excuse me, how does it it's happen, It's not voyeuristic John? like that. It's, it's not, I'm not sitting there with a beard drooling watching them do what they do. It's yeah, not voyeuristic exactly. like that at all. It's, it's something that it's has happened perverted. between them, it's, it's happened between perverted. other girls. Meet Alan and Diane. Alan says you can learn so many wonderful things by dating both men and women. Why sell yourself short? And Diane says she doesn't mind that Alan is bisexual because she knows the most important thing is that he loves her. Thank you for being here. Now, we've got to ask you, why are you in disguise? Uh, well, simply because I don't want to be kicked out of my house. So your family doesn't know? No. Um, no, no. I think, I think my mom suspects, but I don't think that she knows for sure. So it seems to me like maybe, I don't know, I'm trying to understand. You're giving 100% of your love, and he's maybe giving you only 50... Well, just because, I mean, I'm bisexual doesn't mean that I'm, like, sleeping around with everybody or I have to diffuse my love. Um, right now I'm, I'm with Diane, and I'm not with anybody else. So you're right. saying there's, there's enough, there's more, to you to go, more for you to go around or something? Well, just like, I mean, if, I, if we had like six kids, that wouldn't mean that we loved any one child less. I see. Okay. Yes. I, I mean, of course, that goes easier than anything else. Now, there's a few girls who may admit it, but probably not. How many girls out there would like to be with another girl or another girl and another man? Or Anybody would raise their hand? I'm sure that a cool. lot of the women, as well as men, have thought about it. It's crossed yeah. everybody's it's mind. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's, going, it's crossed it's everybody's just mind. We took the initiative to cross the line, and y'all haven't. Yeah, that's, that's right. basically what it is. Meet Tyrone and Tony. Tyrone had been married for five years to a woman when he told her he was bisexual and introduced her to the man in his life, Tony. The three of them lived together for a short time until Tyrone and Tony decided to move out. Tyrone and Tony are now living together, but Tony still sees his wife and dates other women. Tony, you consider yourself to be gay? Gay. Okay, plain and simple. <laughs> plain and simple. That's okay. It's okay to be gay, but it's not okay to be bisexual. I don't quite understand. You know what? May, may I make a comment? I mean, I found, I'm sorry, but I found like a lot of like discrimination in, in the gay community. Um, being bisexual, people are like, you're bi, oh wait, you're a traitor. You know, you're not being true to like all the gay people out there. And I'm like, I'm sorry, I'm me. I, I don't want persecution from you or straight people. You feel like you, you shouldn't have to make excuses for yourself at no, all. Oh man, I'm me. And, okay. and this is not based on all just sex. You think Absolutely. it's all Thank just you. sex. And that's what you're thinking about, just the sexual aspect of it. It's having a good friend someone to talk to she it's is, not she is so much better she's so much more well-rounded because of her do you it think she's a better a very, lover because of her it was experience a very with women? It was, she was a very small gap to fill up in in the that fulfilled the circle she's so well-rounded she's just a hundred percent she's an incredible woman for many people bisexuality is not easy to accept or understand as we've seen from our audience today and with the threat of aids many say that being bisexual is just plain crazy but i personally respect my guests right to make individual choices i want to thank you all for being here and being honest and telling your stories i really appreciate it thanks for watching see you next time to her cousin. What do you think about that, Kimber? I think it's nothing more than a marriage that was created out of some kinky, incestuous fantasy that's now gone sour. <laughs> Jennifer Uriel. Now's your chance. Run. Run on national TV. I'll Run punch out you the on door. national TV, too, so I would be quiet. <laughs> He's got her brain 
brainwashed. This is a bitch. I get the feeling. Is that booze I smell on your Yuri? No. Uh, wait don't a think minute, so. wait a minute. Let's, let's, let's that's, sit. that's bad breath I smell on her. And I saw him and I thought he was really cute and I started talking to him and it ended up that we were cousins and. I told my sister about it and I wanted it to be kind of secret because I didn't want anyone to know and she went and told my whole family and has been making jokes about me to everybody and most people already knew he was our cousin you just yeah but when I was first started dating him you went and told everybody that I was sick and I ruined the family and because you are I mean I mean I love you but wake up Wake up. This guy makes Joe Buttafuoco look like a priest. At least Mr. <laughs> <laughs> At least Mr. B went outside the family. And for she Kinky makes Amy thrills. Fisher look like a nun. <laughs> Boy, I feel the heat. What about you? My next guest, Renee, says she thinks she knows why her friends, who happen to be cousins, are in love. Why, Renee? Well, I think that when you see them, they look exactly alike. They look like twins. I think it's kind of like... So um, they're in, you're saying that they're in love with themselves? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of people won't say things to us. They'll say things to other people or we'll hear things. It's really not Master an issue. Comments. Exactly. Yeah, things, you know, I mean, our own does, family. Doesn't will make, say kiss doesn't each make other. sense. No, seriously, I mean, I'm not sense. trying to cut you down, but I have my opinion. I think I'm entitled to it. Don't you feel funny kissing your own cousin, knowing that you're no, related. No, I don't. You're because... real, being first cousins, you're like a half-brother and sister. You do know that. I don't look at it that way. We didn't grow up together. I, we didn't yeah, see each other a lot. Right. Maybe I didn't grow up with Daddy, but do I jump in bed with Sorry, him? what? Your parents do not have a problem with her your dad, relationship? Her dad, her... My parents... Yeah, my mom does ...have though. a problem, but I'm old enough to make my own decisions, and as far as they're concerned, I'm happy, that's and that's my, all that that's matters. Part, you all have a baby. Yes, we right. do. And you are first cousins. Yes, yes we, we are. are. Did you? <laughs> and they talk in unison. In stereo. <laughs> and did you take special precautions before well, getting married and before having children? Well, before we got married or before she got pregnant, you know, we thought about having a baby. We decided it was something we wanted to do. And we got some genetic counseling. And we found that the percentage of deformities in children and problems in children with first cousins is only 1% higher than the general population. Hi, Pete. Thanks for joining us. Now, your situation gets even a little bit more complicated. You are engaged to be married. Yes. But you still have feelings for your male cousin. To a degree. To a degree. So what's going to happen? I mean, what's, what's going to happen with, with you? You plan to get married? Are you over yes. this relationship? Um, yes. As as far as I'm concerned, yes, it's You're over. Are you going to marry this girl after you've had a relationship with your male cousin? Well, these are the 90s. It, does, wait, it doesn't wait, wait, wait. matter. It has nothing to it do with the matter. hair. If Let you me care just for somebody, you're going to do whatever you want with that there person. There are many people, Renee. And it was in the past. Renee, let me just inform you. There are many people that go through confusing, confusion and Anything not knowing else. their true sexuality. No, no, no. Exactly. I mean, I'm not condoning this. I'm not, you know, passing it's judgment. It's, it's over as far as I'm concerned. And uh, he didn't want to come on the show because he's trying to live his new life. They say love conquers all. And today it seemed to cross family lines. I hope that all of our lovers can stay close to the families that originally brought them together. I want to thank you for watching. See you next time. She is six months pregnant with James's baby. She was shocked when she find, found out that this woman, Keisha, was also pregnant with James's baby. Keisha is three months pregnant, and they only found out about each other three weeks ago. I'm confused here. You, Kim is six months pregnant with your baby, and Keisha is three months pregnant. No, but I'm saying, right, I heard her backstage and everything, you know, meditating on my death and everything, but I'm saying, like, um, I was messing with her off and on, see what I'm saying? So, during the time that I wasn't messing with her, I met her. And you know, if you're going to like somebody and you keep on messing with somebody off and on, you ain't going to drop this head 
Cause you ain't sure you know what's gonna happen between y'all. So I'm saying. What were you thinking when you found out that uh, these women know about each other? You got both of them pregnant. What I was thinking when they were stalking. Yeah. Psst, I wanted to go to McDonald's, sure. <laughs> So y'all, see so y'all asking me how I'm gonna take care of the babies. The main thing y'all is saying is a job. See what I'm saying? Yep. See y'all, y'all didn't, y'all didn't say nothing about this. It's two sides to it, dude. See what I'm saying? We're trying. We want to know about your side. Huh? We want to know your side, James. I'm saying, as far as me and the father, you know, both mentally and you know, when you um take care of them financially or whatever. Y'all sticking to the financial side, asking me about my job and everything. But do, okay, don't you think these babies deserve a dad? Yeah. Yeah, I'm saying, it ain't like I was saying I'm gonna go to Mexico somewhere. Bernadette is four months pregnant with Tony's baby and they are currently engaged. Congratulations. But Tony just became a father nine weeks ago to Angela's baby. Tony has never seen his child by Angela. In fact, in just a few minutes, he'll see his baby for the first time and find out if it's a boy or a girl. He hasn't had anything to do with the baby because until today, Angela has had a restraining order against him. Angela, can I ask? He doesn't know why he had a restraining order against him. Because, okay, when I was pregnant, he put me through so much stress. I was in the hospital twice. What did I do twice. to you? I was a... <laughs> no, the same shit again with you. What did I say? What stress, huh? What did you tell him what she did? She believes in, she sucked around too much, right? She's so innocent, yet the bitch gave me chlamydia, all right? Yeah, yeah, innocent, huh? So you, Stephanie, you're engaged to Don. Yes. Do you trust him? Yeah. yeah. Sonia, come on out. Sonia, what do you want to say? I think he's a low life. Yeah, he has no right. He, do I look pregnant, huh? That's what's going on. That Don is the I father. I know he is. Oh, bull Kiss my Watch your He's language, jerk. Don. Watch truth your language. Hurt, Sonia? Does the truth hurt? I want tests done. You so do I. want tests done. And I'll prove it. Because, I mean, she's got 5,000 different kids by do how I? many different guys? Who knows? This is not an easy show to sum up because of all the emotions each of the people involved are growing through. But as Janet pointed out, the children are the, of the utmost importance here, and I hope that our guests can get past their anger and put the kids first. Thank you for watching. Till next time. says that after she split up with the father of her children, he threatened to kill her and burn down her house. I go to his mother's house just about every day and he puts, he keeps his hands all over me. He's got a girlfriend, but he still um, tries to get me in bed with him. And he's been physically abusive towards yes. you as well. Yes, I've had him arrested several times for harassment and for when he pulled the gun on me. So why are you here today? What do you want to get across to him today by confronting him? Uh, that he has a, a problem with alcohol and that he should get help. Why did you, why do you continue to harass her? She says it's in a daily occurrence. She's there all, she's around all the time. It's always going on. Yeah, but why do you have to throw rocks at her window? Honest. Why do you make her fear for her life? You throw, hold a shotgun up against her and threaten her and her kids? 
I guess I still want to be with her. She don't want to be with me. Can you balance, can you not have a, a sexual relationship with this person and still let him be the father of your children? I'm just, I'm used to him, you know. I feel comfortable with him sometimes, and that, that's why I'm, I feel comfortable. How can you feel comfortable with him holding a shotgun to you? <laughs> Yolanda says that Chris's ex-girlfriend, Gina, not only vandalized her car and sent her death threats, she says that she attacked her in a club with a broken beer bottle. Him, he said this on national TV. He's not with you. He does not want to be with you. Do you believe him? No. Nope. Why Wake not? Wake just with me like last week. Like a spikely week. joint. Wake up. Why don't you believe just him? just with me last week. We sit, down, we sit down and you, you watch know, your show you together. Know, you know, you know why okay. I was with her. You know why I was with her. You know, oh, 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 oh. I, I go to her mother's house where I know she's not there yet, right? Okay. So I give her mother the money, and she she's zooming over there trying to get there before before I leave. Look and at Yolanda's body language. You didn't know about this, did you, Yolanda? No, I, I didn't know this. Why well, you didn't share this with me? Right. Together, you can't just, lie to just to prove you Not how three. serious I am. This is just to prove how serious I am. He okay? told me this on the phone before okay. I came here. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna let you know that that I have nothing to do with her anymore, and I, I'm ready to ask this lady to be my wife. <laughs> my next guest please meet sue sue says that she had to skip town with her child because she says her ex threatened to take her son away from her and told her she would never see the child again well some of it's true i did threaten her but the only time i ever threatened her is when she threatened to take my son and i threatened to kill her once that's not and that true. was it that is that true. is not true rob you okay. threaten me all the time all the time that's not true and as for us like me uh saying you know who she's with and all we were we were together what three weeks ago and she asked me the same questions you know, Rob, I, I don't talking... harass her anymore. She can't call my work anymore. Rob, I got this gold chain for Christmas. Who'd you get it from? Who'd you get it from? Who'd you get it? You don't stop. It's non -stop. But What were you doing? Just remember, if you're being harassed by someone and you think you might be in any type of danger, help is only a phone call away. Just don't wait until it's too late. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Guests say that they may be overweight, but their sex life is better because of it. This was me when I was younger and thinner. Now I'm bigger and my sex life's never been better. All this right. was me when I was muscle bound and a mere 161 pounds. Now I'm 70 pounds heavier and my sex life is fantastic. I was thin waisted, 29 inch waist, and now I've got a 38, but uh, I feel a lot better. And you think your, your wife? Feels good about your weight gain? No, my wife don't like it one bit. <laughs> but your sex life is, be is better. Yeah, it's better when I have it anyway. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and you think you actually got bigger besides your girth, you also gained weight in your penis? Yeah, actually, it's an inter that's an interesting thought. Don't ask me how or why, but uh, uh, let me tell you, it's, it's uh, Guys, you hear a that? lot of fun. You may be eating that extra pie at dinner, huh? Yeah. There are a lot of people who say there is no way you can be your size and sexy. Let's meet two of them right now. Come on out. I have tried sleeping with a heavy woman, and I could not do it. Well, it, but that's, it was, your, it was just that's all up here. That's your how, how can you remain physically and sexually excited with someone if they are physically disgusting? But, now, wait, but that's what you like. You like the slimmer person, right? If somebody's fat and overweight, they can't, like, you know, take that pounding type thing that goes on for a long time. You know what I'm saying? Endurance now. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. It ain't happening. I have an S. 
escort service and the girls see about five different people a day and it's not the sex but they dance and they move all day long. Your, your husband was just on talking about how great his sex life is now that he's big. Yeah, big all over. Look at this. Stand up. Stand up. He used to have no belly and it's all there now. He used to have no chin and it's all there now. His arms used to be muscular, now they just hang down. It's all different. You can't say that it's not different. Tiffany says she can't understand how you can be heavy and have a healthy sex life. She finds Flab a big turnoff. Total turnoff. It is impossible to have good sex, healthy sex, being overweight. Taking what care is sex? You know what I mean? A suede dress and five inch pumps or what she has on right there. Why do I have five inch pumps? I'm talking about sexy, sexual attraction. Couldn't she okay? put that on you? We're not, we're not inhibiting. Oh, you somebody you get you sex. I have been overweight, I have been thin, and because I know what it feels like to be dumped on because I was fat, I have tried sleeping with an overweight woman. Being that I have tried both, I would rather be in bed with an attractive, slim woman than in the ocean with a whale. Well, here's the point. I'm saying that everyone can be happy with their sex lives, and it may not have as much to do with your partner's weight as it does what they do for you emotionally. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Tijuana dresses so provocatively that people go out of their way to stop and stare when Tijuana walks by. Denise is 24 years old and she says that her sister Felicia is so radically different than she is. Denise sometimes feels like they come from two different families. <laughs> She wears. She's got to stop doing what she's doing. Okay, you two are out of your seat. What are you thinking right now? Oh, well, I think she's very attractive, and by the way she's dressed, you know, I would like to get to know. See? See? Right. She dresses. See what I mean? By the way she dresses. Yeah, no, exactly. I would like to get to know her because she's a pretty girl, and maybe she's nice, but by the way she dresses. And that's not even a reflection of who she is. Yeah, um, the, the one in the leather vest, I think if you break wind in that outfit, you eject yourself right out of that seat. And you right here. You know, I'm the example that I show for my kids. My kids are seven, three, and two. First of all, only nakedness they're going to get right about now is walk, getting out the um, bathtub, OK? And what they see, they know not to do. I teach my kids, you, you follow my rules. Meet Henry. Henry says he is embarrassed to go out with his sister because when he does, she's always trying to pick up the guys. Well, it's not only the way she dresses, it's her attitude it's also. her attitude. All right, you want to meet Jennifer? She's here. <laughs> Jennifer, come on out. choose to dress this way Listen, it's very it's very nice it's very classy and it's like covers a lot of it and and if you know when it covers it, what you see any nipples do you see any nipples okay I was the only girl and I had a child I disappointed everybody I, see. I disappointed everybody and so you continue up. to disappoint no they gave up they gave they gave up when, when I started working and supporting my child and having to drop out of school and everything I had Everybody gave up on me. So you I dress like this and you act like this for you because it makes you feel good? This is just me. 
This is you. This, this is, is who just you me. Are. It's, it's the way I am. If I want to dress the way, you know what I'm saying? I'm not conforming to any rules and regulations. What I do and what I say and how I feel and how I dress are my rules and are my regulations. We thought it might be fun to do some makeovers, to turn the tables and make our young guests a little more like the sisters that they want them to be. Why don't you come on out, Felicia? What do you think of the new Felicia? I like it. What do you think, audience? You I like, like it? it. It's Jennifer, Jennifer, come on out. Let's see who you. you. I gotta see this. <laughs> I gotta. Oh. for Jennifer. You know what, Jennifer? I think I have that suit. <laughs> I don't know about the wig, you know. I don't know about the wig. You think she looks hot this way? Ma'am? Everyone has the right to dress up the way they want to, but the bottom line is you have to respect yourself. I want to thank all my guests for being here today, and a special thank you to Episode for lending us the clothing. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Nikki. Last week's brawl with Kimberly, who was waiting backstage, put her hand in that cast. She sees my boyfriend all over town with this person and that person and this person. When it's funny, when he's with me most of the time. Yeah, where's he at now? He's in jail. Yeah. Oh, he's real good. <laughs> I wonder why. Who put him there? I put him there. Yeah. Uh huh. So you two are supposed to be friends. If you're her friend, Nikki, why are you going around telling her fa to her face that he's around with 16-year-olds? Because that's why. She's my friend. I don't want her to get screwed over by the idiot. I mean, he's a jerk. So you're looking out for her best interests? Yeah. yeah, right. It's true. Nikki says that you rammed her head in a wall. You've broken her nose. Oh, uh, yeah, you know, everything is all my fault. And she's this victim, but, I mean, she's twice my size. She's bigger than me, you know. What has she done to you? She's hit me in the back of the head with a phone once. Just watch this clip of Junie and Tina during our show, I Was Betrayed by My Best Friend. Hey, audience, do you want to meet the other side of the story, yeah. Tina? Yeah. Come on out, Tina. I've grown up a little bit since then. I hope you have too. Yeah. <laughs> and, it was uh, ridiculous. <laughs> you know, we're not going to be going out all the time like we used to. It's just, yeah. it's impossible. What a nice way to, to end things up. They're talking things out. Isn't that, what a difference. <laughs> By the way, what happened to this guy you were fighting over I divorced anyway? I <laughs> women taking on women in physical fights to settle an argument. Take Julie, for instance. She says she ended up breaking her ankle because Christine, who was waiting backstage, called Julie a few nasty names. Is that true? The first time I'm not correct. The first time I'm not correct. The first time I'm not have any respect, it's you. She You're the one that runs the looks at all the time. 2 o'clock in the morning, looking for her old man. It wasn't 2 o'clock in the morning girl. either. Shut you don't off. remember things very well. Right. Though. I'm not the one in an alcoholic haze. So hey, don't look, tell me. You can accuse anyway, all you want. She's on my love seat with her skirt clear up around her waist with her hands, old man's hand up her dress. Is that respect in my house? First time. Right. Even this past Winter Olympics, when two hopefuls got into a no cat fight. Oh, yeah, you fat oh, troll.
We hope that all of our guests today can put an end to their disagreements. See you next time. Diane, Sherry, and Anne. They are all working prostitutes and proud of it. I have gone out of my way to educate myself thoroughly on safe sex and, and alternatives to sex, which I promote when I go and see a client. Um, I educate all my clients on safe sex, and you would be surprised at how many men out there really have not the faintest clue on how to use condom correctly. So do you think they leave your, you after a session with you learning something? Absolutely. I mean, I drill it into their head or I won't stay. Sherry, you say that you can separate sex from love? Yes. love? Because I have boyfriends and I won't have sex with a boyfriend, I'll just have sex with my clients. Because I'm waiting until I get married to have sex with a boyfriend. The money is great, I'm used to the way I'm living, and I love it. I mean, I'm getting sex and getting money at the same time. Oh yeah. So you think you're doing better, you're doing better than most women? <laughs> yeah. Meet Raynetta. She was a prostitute for seven years and is HIV positive. She says these prostitutes are fooling themselves if they think they can walk away from prostitution and not be damaged from it. And if you think that, you know, this is society, just, kind, fair, forgiving, I want to see you have to get out of this business or get hurt out there and have to go to somebody and ask for a job. You explain what you've been doing for the last five years. All right. And see if you get hired. Gonna... You are the exception. Is the exception, but Why? for the rest of us, because because most because most prostitutes do not reach that level where they can get that kind of money. So far, all the prostitutes we have met have been women. But if you thought it was only women who are proud to be prostitutes, you're wrong. Meet Byron and Dwight. They are both prostitutes and proud of it. Byron has been a prostitute for two years. He says he is proud of it because it makes him feel good to help other people. Dwight has been a prostitute for four years and says he is proud to be a prostitute because some women are very lonely and he is providing a service. Basically, women tell me that I'm someone, see, I don't only get paid for sex. A woman can pay me for my services if she just wants to talk, basically. So it, it's not, I kid you not, I've had women call me just because I can listen to them. Hundred dollars. Just to talk. What happens, what happens after so, that? No, really, really. Hey, Dwight, how did you get involved in prostitution? My wife got me in prostitution. Your wife? Yeah. Oh, that's to blame how did that happen? Well, my wife uh, is sick. She has a disease. And um, since she told me once I have a sexual libido to power a large metropolitan area for millennia, she uh, told me that uh, one of her friends were sitting and they said, well, I'd like to find out how your husband is in bed. And sure enough, she said it'll cost you a hundred bucks to find out. And that's how you got involved. And that's how I got your started. Your wife is here today. Let's, let's hear what she has to say. How do you feel about your husband being a prostitute? Well, just like any other business, we discussed it, started it. it and uh, I know a lot of you are with your eyes here and ears, but none of you have been five days in the hospital and it's cost $10,000 either. And if he didn't do that, then we can't file bankruptcy every year. And I'm in there every year. So it's basically you do it for the money. Yeah, if you were uh, rich, you wouldn't be doing this. Right. I, I feel that if I wasn't out there doing what I do on the weekends, she would not be with me in New York today. There's no way. All right. 
I don't consider myself a prostitute, a male escort, okay? <laughs> now, what, wait a minute, what I mean by that, it can be. But I'm it saying, listen, be. listen, Who would you I call don't it? sleep with, I'm not standing on Hollywood Boulevard waiting for this chick to come by or that chick to come by. I date, date, married, widowed, lonely women. What would you if do if you have daughter, sex, what if you do the sky is the limit. Grow up to do that. I beg yeah, your pardon? What would you do? How would you feel if your daughter grew up to be a prostitute or to be an escort, as you call it? But you see what? That's her choice. That would be her choice. It is clear that people become prostitutes for lots of different reasons. This isn't a topic we can sum up in a few words, but I do hope that all of my guests who do not practice safe sex will start to today, and those who already do will continue to. Sex is not something that anyone should ever die for. Thank you for watching. See you next time.